it's like yeah. everything's just gone yeah it's crazy <laughs> it's so crazy are you enjoying every minute of it yeah i love it i love it that's so, like i was saying at the beginning you know i love long days because it's just you're doing stuff it's fun Kian de Crow, lovely to meet you. I have to say, you left a big impression with me. Now, let me put this into context. I have the worst memory in the world ever. <laughs> but when I saw your name come around on our playlist last year, I was like, Kian de Crow, I know that name. And straight away, I was like, and I'm not sure if you want to talk about this or not, but I remembered you on The Voice. No way. Yes, wow. way. And wow. Whenever I saw you on The Voice, I was gutted because, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, you picked the wrong song to sing yeah. first. None Absolutely. of the judges turned around. Then they did, and they asked you to sing a different song. Yeah. You played um, one of Adele's. Oh, yeah. I Make can't you feel my love. Yes. And they were just like, oh, my God. And you, you were so much better with that. Yeah. And I looked you up. I was trying to find you online. I came into work. I was working on the breakfast show at the time on downtown radio. And I mentioned you on the Monday morning. It was like, did you see the guy, uh, Kian DeCrow on The Voice? Such oh, a wow. To get through. So then last year, when we had your first single, All For You, I was just like, oh my God, here he is. As an 18 year old, as I think you were when you were on The Voice. Yeah, I think so, yeah. How hard was that rejection for you? Because I'm sure at that time you were really excited to be on the show and you probably had all these great big plans going on in your head. And then it was a no. Um, well, so interesting one. Um, the First of all, thank you so much. It's so kind. Uh, all that you have just said is really sweet. Um, I think um, the first thing is... I, by the point I was actually going on the show, there's a lot of rounds before you get on live television. By that point, I didn't want to be on the show anymore, really. Right. Um, I just kind of wasn't feeling it. I was, it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Bear in mind, it was really like, the, everyone was super nice. So it was nothing to do with the peep earning. It was so well run. It was really friendly and stuff. Just wasn't an environment that I enjoyed. Um, Secondly, I wasn't actually allowed to technically choose my own song. You were kind of pushed into what you were supposed to sing. So yeah. what they didn't show, in fact, on television is that when I sang a second song, they actually said, if you had, if you were able to sing whatever you wanted, what would you have sang? And oh. then I said, and then I said, well, I would have just sang something acoustically with my guitar, like make you feel my love. And they were like, do you want to do one right now? And I was like, sure. And then it was an amazing moment. And everyone stood up and I was honestly just like delighted to be, to have that experience off the back. Um, the rejection was probably, par partly the rejection was was difficult, obviously like any, um, you know, it's like a big high where you, you fall. Um, but I think I knew I didn't sing well. I had completely lost my voice for about a week leading up to it, even though I went on voice rest because I think I was so nervous at this because it was just such a weird situation. I got, I remember I was in boarding school and I just completely lost my voice and I couldn't sing. And my vocal coach was at me. She was trying to fix my voice. And I was like, I was like, I'm screwed. Like, I'm not going to be able to sing this song, you know? And so I think getting rejected, I was kind of just like, sure, I didn't sing well anyway. I knew I did like 2% of what I felt like I could have done. And so I wasn't kind of like, oh, I did my best and they rejected me. I was like, I did my absolute worst and they and they didn't turn around. Like, obviously, I wouldn't have turned around for me either. So I, I was just kind of like, whatever, like I just messed up and it wasn't really a situation I was wanting to be in. Um, but it was definitely something that I think um, was one of the many moments that were like difficult that always spring you up into a better moment and I think those moments are moments you always have to be grateful for because I think anything good in your career in your life they all fit, it often comes out of something that can be really bad or can feel at that time like it's the worst thing ever that you know is happening yeah I always think everything happens for a reason and I was wondering well maybe that experience helps spur you on to prove you know exactly what you're capable of and we did get a glimpse and you know if, if it makes you feel any better I can't name a single winner from The Voice but I remember you from oh, oh, thank you very much so let's talk about present day I'm sure so much has happened in between then and now but of course your first single All For You released last year and oh, 
it just got me every time you sing with yeah. such passion with such feeling there's a story behind the song which in the world of if you want to call it pop you never really get decent stories I work on a country station as well and mm -hmm. you get them more there but your tracks and your songwriting there's always a story there's always a depth to it yeah where do you get it from um I think I always kind of growing up music was always something that was super really really meaningful it was supposed to be something extremely real mm -hmm. um and it was something that helped me and my family a lot in very difficult times so I think when it came to writing music it always had to have the same feelings and intentions as that and the stories had to have that kind of that way to them and I always just feel like if I'm not writing anything that's real or that means anything then it's just pointless because I'm not like trying to I'm not trying to become you know I'm not doing it to become famous or or to you know be a star like I'm doing it because I love music and I want to make great music and I want to reach as many people as I can with that music and hopefully help them by talking about real things and by going to places that I've been in my life and sharing those experiences and sharing that emotion whether it's just through my voice or through the lyrics through the music um and that for, for me what it's about and it's about giving to other people and, and hopefully helping them because I know how much music helped me when I was growing up and and you know still does yeah music can be so so healing and you know I think we've all been through different things in our life and there's certain music that's been there certainly has helped me through um so we could call you almost a therapist now because you're providing the medicine for all of us and um all for you obviously a song you could call it a breakup song but your new single I'll be waiting which is fabulous as well thank you there's a different story behind that yeah um yeah so I'll be waiting is um I guess a more on the, in a way, on the nose uh, uh, story of my own life. Um, and it's a song that I wrote that was basically like, I spent a lot of time growing up and sort of feeling guilty or sort of, yeah, feeling guilty over certain feelings that I had towards my dad. And I think when I was a kid, I really wanted him to even though he was like a bad person and I didn't want him in my life and he was doing terrible things, there were times when he wouldn't show up when he was supposed to. And that would really upset me, even though I knew he was a bad person. And as I grew up and, you know, had, you know, basically as I grew up, I would almost kind of feel guilty for having felt like any positive sort of feelings towards him, like wanting him to show up or feeling sad that he didn't show up even though I knew he was a bad person and I was so confused with these feelings. And I think as I got even older, I realized that like, it was okay to feel that way. Like as a kid, like you're allowed to, you know, hope that your dad shows up, even if he's a bad person, you know, because that's just what they're supposed to do. And as a kid, you just kind of, you, you just feel what you feel, you know, you don't put any, you're not rationalizing or giving reasons to anything, you know? And I think I wanted to write something that was for that younger me and, other people that might have been in that situation or in in that place and felt those same feelings of you know guilt or anything towards what they felt as a kid and just to be like it's okay to feel that way it's okay it's okay that one day you were waiting and you're not anymore but it, it doesn't matter that one day that you were it's you know it's completely fine I'm sure that piece of music will help so many people going through so many different things of course you took it out in a bite and it yeah. If people listening to this right now have not followed you on TikTok or Insta, they need to because you get a re real insight into what type of person you are. You like to have a bit of fun. And yeah. took I'll Be Waiting out to all sorts of locations at train stations, which I think you realize quite quickly, maybe a bad decision because everyone <laughs> to get a train um you've done fast food takeaways and restaurants you've done trains the train one i have to say there were people not quite sure that we're sitting on that train beside yeah. you that the guy in the gray anorak i'm thinking with the short hair yeah, yeah, yeah. And first he was like what's going on here you started singing on your own then of course it's like a flash mob singing wise yeah, yeah. everybody else joins in it's half the train carriage and by the end, or by, by the time you got into the chorus, then he's, you know, clapping yeah, along yeah. and loving every minute of it. 
How nervous were you walking into those different scenarios, shopping malls, like skateboarding rinks, just to start singing without anybody expecting it? Yeah, sometimes it's more, sometimes I'm a bit nervous and and then other times I'm, other times I'm fine. I don't know, or sometimes I can just get into the zone where I'm just like, I just don't even think, I don't think about it. I just sing and I'm like, just going to completely for, forget about what the fact that I'm doing this. And I think you like weirdly get used to doing it. But mm-hmm. there are moments where I've been like, oh my God, I've been really nervous to do it. And I just have to be like, why am I nervous now? I just did it five times the other day or whatever. So um, yeah, it's a weird one, but I do love it. And I love the feeling of it. And I think it's really just a fun way to bring music to people and to just like do something a bit different, I think. Absolutely. Well, for anybody who has watched your videos or has listened to your music, and of course we're playing it nonstop at the minute, we've got a date in the diary and I'm going to be there. And I haven't sorted my ticket yet though, but I'm going to be at the limelight on the 24th of March and you're going to be there too. So I will. Um, have, you, have you played in Belfast before? Never. Oh, so this is the first time. Yeah, I'm very excited. What else can we expect from you? Because we know the two tracks. What What other... What can you expect with the show? Yeah, what are you going to do for us? Uh, Well, I'll be doing a lot of stuff that was before the two tracks, uh, the two recent tracks, and then I'll be doing um, a lot of uh, new stuff as well that is unreleased. Fantastic. And of course, it's not just Belfast. You're doing a European tour. I think recently just announced US and Canada dates as well. It's like everything's just gone. Yeah, it's crazy. (laughs) It's so crazy. Are you enjoying every minute of it? Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's like I was saying at the beginning, you know, I love long days because it's just you're doing stuff. It's fun. Can't complain. Well, I'm not going to make your day any longer. I'm going to leave you right now but thank you so much for chatting to us i thank look you. forward it's a to pleasure. seeing you in march it's like literally just a few weeks away now and i will be there so uh, thank you so much catch up then but uh, best luck for the future and thank you so much for chatting to us thank you bye with kirsty mcmurray Downtown.